Methanamine is one of the antibacterial agent that is used to treat urinary tract infections. This medication is effective against both gram positive as well as gram negative bacterial infections. It is available in the form of two salts. One is hippurate and second one is mandelate. This methanamine is also called as mandelamine. Both of these salts are available as tablets. However, they are not equivalent due to their difference in the release of medication. The hippurate salts are given two times per day, whereas mandelate salts are given four times per day. So today in this video, let us discuss how this drug works in treating urinary tract infections. What are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. First of all, let us see how this methanamine works. Methanamine can be given in the form of its salt, either hippurate or mandelate. Both of these salts are readily absorbed into the body and they can reach into the urine within 30 minutes. In the urine, they are going to be hydrolyzed to release the acidic part. In case of methanamine hippurate, hippuric acid is going to be released. It results in the acidification of the urine, leading to decreased urinary pH. Interestingly, methanamine is mainly hydrolyzed within the urine. Therefore, it can mainly act on the bacteria in the urine and it is used for urinary tract infections. It is not having any effect on systemic bacterial infections. Methanamine is a medication which requires hydrolysis to show its antibacterial action. Interestingly, it is mainly hydrolyzed within the urine. It can be split into two parts. One is the formaldehyde and another one is the ammonia. Here formaldehyde is having the non-specific antibacterial activity. So it is going to reduce the bacterial action of both gram positive as well as gram negative infections. However, for this breakdown of methanamine, the urinary pH should be less than 5.5. This can be achieved by either hippuric acid or mandelic acid, which are incorporated as the salts of methanamine. However, in few people, methanamine may be ineffective because of alkaline urine. So acidification of urine is very important. In the people with any alkaline urine, methanamine is ineffective. Especially the pH of the urine can be affected by the diet. For instance, high consumption of citrus fruits like oranges, grapefruits can increase the urinary pH that leads to alkaline urine. At the alkaline pH, methanamine is ineffective because it cannot be broken down into formaldehyde. And even in such people, citrate crystals are more formed in the alkaline urine, which may further increase the symptoms of urinary tract infection. On the other hand, reducing the urinary pH may increase the activity of methanamine. Particularly, the vitamin C having ascorbic acid can decrease the urinary pH. Similarly, protein foods can also reduce the urinary pH, which increase the action of methanamine. So when methanamine is going to be taken for longer periods, protein rich and vitamin C rich foods should be taken in order to maintain acidic urinary pH. However, methanamine may be ineffective in treating few of the bacteria, particularly bacterial species like Proteus and Pseudomonas are not treated by methanamine. These type of bacteria can split the urea by the action of urease enzyme. This may result in the increased urinary pH at which methanamine is ineffective. What is the effect of methanamine on the liver? Just we have seen that methanamine is split into two fragments, formaldehyde and ammonia. In normal people, the small amounts of formaldehyde and ammonia cannot affect the function of liver. But in the people with hepatic insufficiency, they may develop the symptoms of acute hepatic failure. So in such people, liver failure can be developed resulting in if you have the symptoms like upper abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, and even the development of jaundice. So development of these symptoms may indicate induction of liver failure, which may impair the hepatic function. Similarly, methanamine, when it is taken at the higher doses, it can increase the amounts of formaldehyde in the bladder, which produce bladder irritation. This may result in painful urination and discomfort during the urination. However, significant effects can be observed when this methanamine is used at doses above 8 grams per day. In people with gout, methanamine should be carefully used. In such people, the uric acid levels are elevated and methanamine can increase the formation of uric acid stones in the urine. So in such people, methanamine should be carefully used. Use in the pregnancy. Use of methanamine is not safe 
in pregnant women. Particularly in the first and second trimester, it can impact the fetal growth and may lead to few abnormalities. That's when pregnant women use of methamine is not recommended. Use with sulfonamides. Sulfonamides are another category of drugs which are antibacterial agents that can be used for treating various types of bacterial infections. They can also be used to treat urinary tract infections. However, they should not be administered along with methanamine. Sulfamides require alkaline urine for proper excretion. Since methanamine produce acidification of the urine by release of hippuric acid or mandelic acid, it can reduce the solubilization of sulfonamides, resulting in the formation of insoluble precipitates. This may result in the crystal urea, formation of crystals in the urine. That's why methanamine is contraindicated with sulfonamides. Similar effect is also observed with estrogolamide, where estrogolamide is precipitated in the urine in presence of methanamine. Now, what is the side effects of this medication? One of the main side effects is the pain while urinating. This condition is called as dysuria. Similarly, it can also produce other side effects like abdominal discomfort, nausea and vomiting, skin rashes and pruritus. Particularly, rashes and pruritus can be observed by increased quantities of hippuric acid and other allergic components in this medication. At toxic doses, methanamine can produce hemorrhagic cystitis because of increased bladder irritation. And even it can also produce liver failure at toxic doses. Now let us the doses of methanamine. All we have seen that methanamine is available in the form of two salts as hippurate and mandylate. Hippurate is available at 1 gram strength whereas mandylate is available at 0.5 gram and 1 gram strength. Both of these medications are available as tablets but they are not equivalent. Methanamine hippurate is given twice daily whereas methanamine mandylate is given 4 times per day. So that's all about this medication methanamine which is a urinary antibacterial agent that is used to treat urinary tract infections. It is split into formaldehyde and ammonia where formaldehyde acts as a non-specific antibacterial agent and it can inhibit both gram positive as well as gram negative bacterial infections in the urine. However, few of the bacterial species like pseudomonas are not treated by methanamine because these species can produce alkaline urine. Acidification of the urine is very essential for effective action of methanamine. Dysuria, abdominal discomfort, nausea, rashes are the important side effects produced by this medication. This medication should not be given with sulfonamides due to formation of crystal urea. So that's all about this medication. I hope this video is useful to you. If you really like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and post your comments in the comment box. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.